so this is this is the original example notebook, which is also the example script uh, each week. And let's see how to do this on the fly. Um, I mean, you're just reading in data from a package called Y Finance, which hooks up to the Yahoo Finance API. And then you download a bunch of price data. And so this, this whole problem is only using price data. It does some transformations after you get the price data. So this is what the raw data looks like. You have a ticker and the price for every single day. And this is from 2002 to about 2017, I think. So now that we have all those prices, we have an RSI function, which computes the, the relative strength index, which you can think of as just a momentum indicator. And then, so you calculate the RSI. So now not only do you have price, but you have the RSI indicator. And then here's where we need to kind of control for stationarity to some degree and, and turn it into a cross-sectional problem. So we, we take the quintile per day of whatever this RSI was. So you see this RSI number 18 is, is relatively low compared to these others. So it's in the zeroth quintile. This one 70 is, is higher. So it's in the fourth quintile. Yeah, this is a great point to pause. Um, I mean, <clears throat> so so every data set is is, is kind of different. You could have weird data um, like like Wall Street bets data or, or something like that, where you've got to really do a lot of work to turn it into a signal. But um, a lot of other data isn't isn't like that to to get into into a feature. Um, so this is very common where you have a ticker and some feature. But the, oh, sorry, I should say a ticker and some data. Um, like you have ticker here and price. Uh, price isn't a feature, uh, but it is, it is it, you could submit it as a signal, but it wouldn't be good, right? So because it doesn't have an, enough of the right properties. And what Jason's doing here is kind of taking it through a pipeline to become a feature, to go from a, a data column into a feature. So price into RSI, which is just some function of price, and then into a rank or quintile within that uh, universe. Um, <clears throat> so although there is a lot of weird data out there that might be hard to, a lot of data is actually of this form. Um, if, you, if price here was PE ratio, or 12 month momentum, you could also take that and transform it into a rank and a, or a quintile, um, or take that and transform it into some derivative of it, and then to transform it into uh, a rank. So um, this is a very good screen to remember if you're working with this data, because it's not very hard after that point. Um, uh, after you get that idea. Yeah, exactly. So Arbitrage is asking how many days do we lag? And, and that's kind of up to you as well. Like that, when you create lags, which I guess is the next step. So we had the RSI quintile per day, and then here we loop through and we're taking five lag days. So here is this day's RSI, here is yesterday's, the day before that. And in this case, they're kind of similar, which a machine learning model might pick up on. And that could, that could be helpful. If they change a lot, that could be helpful. Uh, but however many lag days you wanna add, how you wanna like, do the lags is all gonna be different types of feature engineering, which could make your model better or worse. There are some libraries out there that will come up with any type of combination of these as well to create more features. You may end up overfitting by doing that, but there are just so many ways to do it. And just a kind of clue why this kind of helps or works, tends to work. Um, if you do have, um, let's say you put in a raw data column as your feature, 
like a data field like price to earnings ratio. Um, there are some times, like say 2009, where all the stocks have very low price to earnings ratios. They're all like around 10 um, because the market was really, really low down. Um, but there are times like now uh, where the average PE ratio is maybe like 25 or something because the market's much uh, more overpriced. Um, and, <clears throat> and so what the transformation of ranking does, and it's not rocket science, but if you ranked all the PEs, there's always a lowest one and there's always a highest one. Um, and so you might say, because some people might say, well, how can you use data from 2009 uh, to predict what's happening today? And, um, and you can't really, but if you ranked it, there was, there was a highest PE stock in 2009 and there's a highest PE stock today. And maybe they, even though the highest PE stock back then was 50 and the highest PE stock now is a thousand, they still might share some similar properties. So that's the point of all the uh, ranking. Right. So uh, that's kind of what I meant to by it controls for non-stationarity. If things are changing over time, this, this will help smooth that out. There are other techniques too. And the other reason why ranking may help is, and I like asking questions like this to Richard because it can sometimes give us hints, is I like to think that their targets are made in a similar way where really how they think about the stock market is in rankings per era. Um, and so if we rank our features per era, we're trying to kind of get at a similar problem. You want me to keep going through all this? Uh, yeah, what, what does it come to? So these are nice graphs. Yeah, so this kind of explains the targets. So now that we've done all the feature engineering, we're going to join all of the features onto the targets that you guys provide us. And this is before you've trained anything. You're going to train on this target. Right. So we, we pull in the signals train val data set, which looks like this. And you have uh, the tickers, the dates, whether it's a train or validation, and then the actual targets that we're going to train against. Yeah, so we can, I mean, the, like the title of this is we're talking about targets, so we can say some more here. So, I mean, what some people say, it's a black box. Why would I submit my signal? Um, I don't know how you're going to score it. And it's like, no, you can download the target and figure out ahead of time, before you stake it, before you start submitting, um, how good your signal is on our target. Not only that, what Jason's doing is actually training to be good at our target. Um, so it's not at all like um, you're throwing uh, darts at, oh, maybe this is gonna work. Like you can tell on the validation data, uh, even before you upload anything, that you have something that's working on the targets. Now, you don't, Again, you don't really have to use our targets. You could just model raw returns or some other thing. Um, and you still, even if you model something weird, some strange target, uh, like did this stock go up 50%? Like you could do something like that and make that your target. That might have an edge on our targets, but typically if you train on our targets, um, you, you know, you're gonna make a model that's focused to do well on those things. Yeah, I think trying multiple methods is probably the best. And then what's great is you can just submit and, and see if you, you, the target that you kind of invented makes sense. But um, so this is just kind of exploratory data analysis of the targets themselves, where this is how many tickers we've been provided over time. In general, it's been going up. Maybe what's more important is, is the distribution like of the, the target values themselves. So it's the same as the main Numerai tournament now with the Nomi distribution where most of the targets take on this middle 0.5 value. And then 
So 50% of them do, and then 20% take on 0.25, 20% take on 0.75, and then a smaller amount take on the more extreme target sizes. And that proportion is, is just equal over time. And so then we're gonna just combine the, the feature set we made with this target set. And so you can see here were the RSI quintiles and now you have a related target to train them to. So it's really very similar to the, the Numeri tournament data set. You're creating this cross-sectional thing. You can just train test split on it and run an sklearn classifier on it basically, or a regressor. Um, so that, I, yeah, I like how many, you know, you have all these different RSIs of different lags. All of them are coming just from price. Um, and so there's always like so many possible features you can make from one data column. You could make the same RSI out of PE if you wanted to, or out of any other data source. Um, it wouldn't have the same meaning, but it would be, you know, there's, there's, there's plenty you can do. And lagging is one thing, different kinds of lags, different kinds of ranking, different kinds of like differentiation, maybe to make it more stationary. There's so many uh, possibilities. And this is more of like a cross-sectional auto-regressive problem, but because now we know all of the tickers through time, you can do more classical time series analysis stuff here too. You can. You can use LSTMs or you can do like ARIMA models. Um, one thing I wanna try, JRB and I were talking about this the other day is just to do a, a very simple time series on the target values alone over time because you know what the targets are from ticker to ticker, era to era, era. Um, to implement that in live, we may need to get the like previous weeks targets, which is one thing I want to request, but um, yeah, we'll get them. Yeah. Um, and so now, like I said, it's just a simple machine learning problem. You do the train test split on train and validation, which Numeri provided us. You build a model here. It's an untuned uh, gradient boosting regressor. And then it's trained, you can check out the feature importances, which I really like to look at. So you can see what the model is kind of grabbing onto in, in figuring out the targets. And generally with an auto regressive problem like this, you wanna see the zeros as being more important than you know the, the fours. I guess what that means is like, the most recent data point is more important than a data point a little further away, which just, you know, you're seeing autocorrelation, which maybe you want to see in something like this. And then you can just predict and we look at our distribution of predictions, which is pretty tightly centered around 0.5. And what that tells us is First of all, it's just a really hard problem. And so you're, it's a pretty conservative model that's kind of predicting everything's in the middle, but really what we wanna get at is the edges anyway. So hopefully, and you can work that into your modeling problem in the first place, but hopefully we're getting these tails more correct than not. And then here's a scoring function. To, to see how we're doing as Numeri would score us over time. This is, this is on the, the training set. So we're clearly overfit and the mean correlation of 0.02 is, is pretty high. We're getting almost 70% of, of errors positive. And the test set's obviously more important. And as you can see, it's a really hard problem. There's a lot of noise this mean correlation is much closer to zero. The hit rate of how many positive errors you're getting is closer to 50%, but this is maybe a slightly positive model with even like almost a year of drawdowns here, then it tends to do a bit better afterwards. 
So aim for much better than this. <laughs> this is not this is not the desired outcome. It's just uh, it's just a good example script. Right. I think the framework is good. The data could be a little bit better. The feature engineering can be a bit better. And Siraj built a notebook on top of this that does do better feature engineering. And I think it does end up doing better. So it's kind of a proof of concept. Then here are some more, it's just kind of boilerplate code, which is going to be helpful to pull out the most recent Friday dates for every week when you want to submit. And then you just take that model that you trained earlier, you predict on the new most recent Friday's date. We're going to double check that the distribution is similar to how our train and test distributions looked centered around 0.5. So that looks good. And then just a bit more cleaning up and you can submit right from the API uh, in the notebook. 